Welcome to Tech Talk. What do balloons, lipstick, and skis have in common? Well, they contain petroleum, which is also one of the main ingredients in conventional plastics. Now, what if there was a way to develop an organic alternative to petroleum, one that was more sustainable? Well, Remy Bousset and Florent Eroguel of Bloom Biorenewables say they have found it. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here on Tech Talk. Such a pleasure. Now, you think you have a possible solution then to petroleum? Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, I want to hear all about it. But first, let's start with set up the petroleum problem for me. I mean, what are we talking about and why is it such an ordeal? Yes, so the, the main problem with petroleum is, is it's linear. So you, you take it out of the ground and then you put it into products that companies have no control over because it's the customer that will basically, or the consumer that will decide what he does with the product. And this uh, entails a CO2 footprint. And we have really now uh, understood this linear problem and, and uh, developed a solution that would solve it by replacing the carbon by a renewable source of carbon, which is based in biomass, or in other words, wood or, or agricultural waste. Okay, so in, in layman's terms, in a very simplified way, this, a, a substitute for petroleum would reduce the carbon footprint of processes and products. Yes, so if you wish, biomass is made of carbon, and uh, when you actually take it as a starting material for your plastics or anything you want to make from this carbon, mm -hmm. it is in a cycle because the trees have taken up the carbon from the atmosphere, mm -hmm. put it into their core, we use the core and afterwards, even if you release it in the atmosphere, it's not an add-on. So you, you, you remove this footprint. Okay. All right, so then talk to me about the solution. What is it you're proposing? So here we answer challenge. So the challenge is being able to extract this carbon from the biomass. So the petrol industry have been doing this for 100 years and is very efficient. That's why all the petroleum products are very cheap. And now the challenge is to be able to do efficiently the same thing with, with biomass. But as we can see here, we have two examples. What is biomass? So this is two examples of biomass. Okay. So here we have other nutshells. And this is uh, hazelnuts. Uh, hazelnut shells. Okay. Uh, this is um, um, byproducts from the food industry. So people don't know what to do with this. So it's, it's the waste. Okay. And here we just have wood. So these are two examples of, of, of biomass. Okay. And the, so the challenge is really being able to extract that carbon. As Remy mentioned, we need to, to catch that carbon and then being able to build all the products you mentioned and many okay. more. So what we have designed is a very efficient process to isolate each of the compounds which are making the plant. And this is what we see here. So we have two, two of the main fractions, which are called cellulose and lignin. Cellulose is, is very well known because it's used today to make mm -hmm. paper, for instance. Mm -hmm. and, and textile, no? And textile Clothing. as well, yeah. So cellulose have been extracted from plants from, from a long time, while lignin have been disregarded because it's of low quality and it's just being burnt. So and it's not valorized. So what we have designed... And nobody knew what to do with it. Exactly. Or... So what we have designed is a process which is able to extract all those compounds. So instead of only valorizing cellulose, which is, let's say, 40% of the plant, mm -hmm. we valorize 100% of the plant. So both cellulose and lignin. And this opened a new way to many applications. Because with cellulose, you have only a limited number of applications. While with lignin, we can really uh, go down to other markets. Okay, and so lignin could easily replace the, the petroleum in these products, right? Both mm -hmm. of these things, cellulose and lignin together, or, so or it's, separately. So it's important to valorize all the fractions, so that's what we do, but lignin is regarded as the fraction that most resembles petroleum for many reasons. But um, we are really able now to crack it down into building blocks. So that is really the challenge that we have managed to overcome is Lignin that is available today is in a form that is very difficult to break down into the Legos that mm -hmm. build the, this polymer. And, and we are really the first company that is able to extract a component that is not linked to cellulose anymore. So we have it in two separate, separate flasks, mm -hmm. but we still have the native structure, as we call it, that allows 
the breaking down, you can take apart the little bits and you can rebuild more or less what you want uh, from this in, in a certain frame. Yeah. How long did this take to come to the point where you were able to yeah, separate the linen? It's a, it's a long pass, so research have been started in 2016. Even okay, before, but, and, and then that's not that long. That's three years. I imagined that this was like ten years coming. No, so no. maybe w what has played a major role is the the ability to understand the, the chemical structure of biomass. Okay. So we are at a point in time where the the just the instruments that allow us to understand the chemical structures is advanced enough to look at these things in in minute details. And this understanding then uh, led, so if you want, it's 10 years of, of development and okay. from which really the, the lab where we are linked to at EPFL uh, has spent uh, probably six, five or six years now uh, on, on the development of this technology. And Bloom Biorenewables has been around since 2016, more e or less. Exactly, 2017, yeah. Exactly, 2017, yeah. okay, okay. Um, actually, to your point, the WEF has also picked up on this development. They put out a report, a recent report, naming the top 10 emerging technologies of 2019, so meaning some of the breakthrough innovations that are expected to radically impact the global social and economic order. And bioplastics for a circular economy is number one. And what caught my attention is, and I quote, a breakthrough idea promotes the circular economy by using cellulose or linen from plant waste, which increases material strength about, without using crops that could otherwise be used for food. And this just sounds like Bloom Biorenewables. Yeah, it is. It <laughs> so, is. I, mean, uh, I mean, do you see your innovation as having a radical impact on the world? Do you see that? Yes, so, so for sure. I mean, other than it's very nice to be included, but yeah. <laughs> no, so I think we really uh, basically have a, a disruptive technology here because a lot of people have tried to valorize uh, lignin especially, and mm -hmm. uh, I would say all of them are, yeah, all of them have failed. That's, uh, or are still trying, let's put it that way. And, and we really come with a completely new approach mm -hmm. to actually deconstruct this uh, non-edible biomass. And I think that is also what VEF re refers to, is mm -hmm. making things from edible uh, starting material is quite easy because edible is easy to digest, it's easy to process. Okay. Whereas non-edible often, it, it's uh, uh, like very that. solid, basically nature mm -hmm. designed it not to be eaten by... Uh, uh, microbes or, or pathogens yeah. and and that's why um, you know we as humans have to come up with really high level technology to be able to break it down without destroying it mm -hmm. and and this is really what we have managed to do uh, at Bloom Bionewables. Now as I think about a world that will be uh, massively impacted I mean what could the future look like if your material was used instead of petroleum? What would make it different? So yeah, our vision is all the products you studied and many more, like for instance, this plastic bottle could be made from, from something as a petroleum, this, from, this so from biomass, yeah. yeah. And then this will really make the, the, the mitigate climate change. Okay, so, so what, what the does biggest that, impact. So what does that look like? I mean, we'll still have plastic. Yeah. We would still have plastic, but what would be different? So this, the plastic would be integrated in the circular economy instead of the linear economy based on petroleum. Meaning that it would somehow, I mean, is it easier to recycle or is it easier to... Do you see, what I, do you see where I'm yeah, going yeah. with this? I mean, are you guys going to help solve the plastic problem so, ultimately? So we are designing uh, polymers that are either biodegradable or, or easier to, to uh, recycle. And we look at, at these things from the design point of view. But what Bloom really does is enables a solution that allows us to, to reduce our dependency on petroleum. Because the, the customer is not going to realize much. I mean, through the years, the packaging has changed and, and people, Not they, really they nice. are interested in what is inside, but the packaging, if it works, it works. Yeah. And I, I think you probably haven't re reflected so much on what is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the starting material for your bottle. Mm -hmm. 
Now, and that is a bit the purpose, is that the world, from the customer point of view, doesn't change too much, that the properties of these materials do not change, but that we use a material that is sustainable, meaning it comes from a source that you can uh, rebuild, and, and biomass is one of them. Okay. Now, one of, the, one of the downsides, of course, always to sustainable solutions is that they tend to cost more. So yes. yeah. how do you? Um, how I think do you work this is really this? where we we make a, a big big uh, game changer. Is really um, today if you focus on cellulose, which is only one fraction, is very hard to be cost competitive because petroleum is is very very cheap. So this is how we manage to tackle the cost competitivity issue is really by managing to isolate 100 percent of of the the potential of the biomass and transforming to high value products. And then since we are able to target high value products for instance, fragrances or aromas, mm -hmm. we are able to be cost competitive with petroleum. And this is really why we, we believe that our solution can be implemented, because this is what I've been restraining so far, biomass uh, valorization is because it's too expensive and nobody wants to pay for it. Right, exactly. And when you guys go into a room and talk to investors, because you're still in a phase where you're looking for funding, True. Yes. you're still a startup technically, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, when you go in and, and you talk to these investors, do you find that they are, that it's an easy sell? Or, I mean, maybe not an easy explanation, <laughs> but do you find that it's, you know, people are receptive and really hungry for this kind of solution? Yes, so, so the, the problem is very and clear. And do they say how much is it going to, you know? The, the, the regulations are coming, you know, the, the, the customer awareness is here and is growing. So I, I think that, that, that's never a question, even where VEF puts it as number one uh, on, on its list. Mm -hmm. uh, now, now the, the way to get there, we are an industrial case, so you, you need to build a plant, you need large capex, mm -hmm. and, and that is always the, the tricky part in, in our business, is you need to scale a process that uh, ultimately takes time and, exactly, it takes mm -hmm. uh, investment, but on the other hand, the return on investment is, is, is large, so you can really then, uh, if you can replace all the plastic, uh, you know, you, you can really tap into mm -hmm. extremely large markets. And the other thing is it's very hard to copy because you, you, we have a patent, we, we have all the structure and foundation that is there. But if you have to spend your five years building a pilot and demo plant, you will have basically an advantage of know-how that you build and nobody can really compete with you on, on that segment. And, and that is really a benefit if uh, you, you are interested in investing in that type of cases. Mm -hmm. That sounds like you're, pretty, you're feeling pretty safe. You have your patent? All right. To finish up, in terms of funding, um, and, I'm, and I'm talking to you because you have some background with the Swiss Parliament. You're a scientific advisor. Um, you are Swiss-based. The company is. How dependent are you on grants, for example, from the EU? Yes, so, so we, we are very dependent. So we, we look at a private, public uh, type of funding kind of hand in hand. And, and the public funding is extremely important from a European point of view because they have installations and, and structures that uh, meet our demand, which we don't have in Switzerland because it's just not big enough. Mm -hmm. and, and if you know, this would be inaccessible from Switzerland, we would really be uh, forced basically to, to leave with the mm -hmm. company at least and, and uh, be able to tap into those. Of course, now we're talking about if the framework agreement does not go through with the European Union, you would be, it sounds like, adversely affected. You'd have to pick up and move and go, I don't yes. know, where? Somewhere and in the EU. I think it's absolutely uh, you know, crucial that Switzerland stays in these uh, agreements because we, we are a bit a lost island if we are not in there and we are typical case where we would have to leave and, and we actually don't want to. Mm -hmm. We want to grow here. The technology comes from here. I mean, the team is, is partially from here and, and we really have this Swiss identity that would be lost just due mm -hmm. to, to, to the lack of, of, of uh, framework or agreements. And you mentioned earlier the, the funding. I mean, we're talking about, you know, the Horizon 2020 program, EU's Horizon 2020, is, what, 80 billion euros of funding that they are dispensing. So it's quite, yeah, it's a good, yes. it's a good amount of money that 
you would no longer have access to. And, and we are currently applying to several of these instruments uh, and, and obviously, you know, uh, if we get them, it's perfect, but, but for the future, we see this as a major contribution to our development and also a generation of value, not only for Bloom, but you always have to come with a consortium. It has to be spread across Europe, so it pushes you basically to build a strong, solid network and nobody is going to solve the plastic problem alone. So. Uh, collaborations across borders is, is really of foremost importance. And to finish up, you have an upcoming trip to the Middle East, to Abu Dhabi. True. I mean, that's oil mecca, right? Yeah, no, so I think this good message is really showing that uh, even the big oil countries, they are looking to invest into new technologies and especially sustainable technologies because they really see that this is a big opportunity. Mm -hmm. So. So they believe they have to, to meet up with uh, entrepreneurs and, and uh, innovators. Why do you do this? Why? Why do you do this? So, I what mean, motivates you to get up out of bed in the morning and, and, and dedicate hours upon hours to bloom biorenewables? So it, I think it's the vision of the company, really, because uh, we we are, you know, at the stage where the climate problems are clear. We are from the scientific side, so we, we don't discuss this. We, uh, most of us, have a, a chemical background, and, and I think what drives us is that we have, like, a knowledge that we can apply. If we apply it right, we might, you know, solve the problem faster, and that's really what Bloom is about, is take our uh, long uh, education and, and transfer it to answer a problem that is really difficult to solve and that only people that have the understanding of the, the, the chemistry behind would be able to do. Yeah, no, I think it's true. And me, I'm a chemist, so I learned, I've been trained as a chemist uh, here in Zurich. And then I, I decided it's really important to use those skills to make something useful. And I think the biggest challenge we have today is really mitigating uh, climate change and finding alternatives to petroleum. So it's really, I have the skills, I'm very lucky to, to have this education and now one really wants to use it to, to make a better world. Wonderful, thanks you guys. Thank you so much for being with us, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.